Hello and welcome back to my case backhoe project. Well, I have the steering box in place now. I planned on recording it, but I have a hard enough time even seeing in there, let alone trying to record what I'm doing in there. But the majority of it's all in place. All the hoses are tightened down. Uh, that's not tightened down yet. I've just got it in loosely because now I have to put all of this back in. And here it all is. I've got the brake system. I've got the shift linkage. Uh, the steering column support. The dash. Well, I was able to get the Gauge cluster all back together. Got my steering all back together. My my shift lever, my throttle lever. Did a little bit of work with the backhoe trying it out. Had pretty good success. I, I dug a, a trench. I'll, I'll show you that trench in a second. And then I just started breaking things. <laughs> things on the backhoe. Uh, my extend a hoe. It had a line that was leaking when I bought it, and the guy pointed out, he was honest about it, and he said, you're going to want to change that line right away, because it, it's, it's literally right here in your face, and if that thing blows, you got some major pressure on it, and it was a pretty good leak, so it was making a mess anyway. I dug probably a 20-foot trench uh, for the pond project that I'm doing here at the upper cabin, and it was it was really starting to leak so I figured all right it, it, it's time I need to replace that hose but once I raise the backhoe up and, and it, there's a clamp that clamps it into place it, it's really not leaking it only leaks when I'm when I'm using it so that gave me the opportunity to use my front end loader to move some dirt around move some logs around get some other things done and then I blew a line on that <laughs> so that was leaking in a waterfall so I had to shut it down uh, I had to pull it around luckily when I'm not using the bucket when it's just kind of down and in place it was just barely leaking it wasn't really flooding out so as I drove around to this position all of a sudden I'm dumping diesel fuel off the side of the motor. I mean, it, it's a waterfall of diesel fuel. So, definitely time to shut it down. Start tearing it all apart. So that's where it is now. I've got everything apart. I've got lines that I need to put back in. <laughs> and I'll walk you around and show you what I'm doing. But the main part of this video that I want to show and demonstrate is the extend a hoe. There's a couple of videos on YouTube on how to replace those hoses and they make it really really complicated. Well in picking theirs apart and really focusing on what parts are all involved in that I found a really easy way to do it. So I'll show you how that's done and Hopefully I don't need some heavy-duty equipment. The guys that have done it here on, on the YouTube channels, they used another backhoe to lift the parts into place. They are heavy, heavy parts. They're hundreds of pounds. So for me to be able to do it all alone, I was shocked I was able to take it all apart by myself. So I just might be able to get it all back together by myself without any heavy-duty equipment. Let's walk you around and I'll show you. On this side of the case, 580D, I blew this hose. And that's the one that was the waterfall down the side. I mean, just, it was literally just flowing out of the side. I probably lost a couple of gallons of fluid down the side of the backhoe. Uh, the rest of these lines are pretty old and tired, but they're not leaking. So, yeah, I, they need to be replaced, and I will replace them little by little, but I want to be able to get back to work. This area is the area I was talking about where I, I dug a trench. So I dug a pretty good trench. 
all along here. I wanted an outlet for my, my pond. So I have a concrete drain that is underneath this area leading to my pond. So I was able to dig down deep enough there and drop that concrete in place and then bury it before everything started to come apart. <laughs> so there you can see I was able to extend the extend the hoe all the way out, drop it down and take it apart. So before I get into that, just do a just a real quick rundown of what I've repaired so far. You can see my, my console, my gauges. Uh, it does have a cover that locks. I was able to restore that and, and straighten it out, get it all smooth enough so that I can wrap it and lock it. They just kind of swing out of the way. Now, you can see my restored gauges. Uh, polish the lenses pretty much so that they're visible. The shift lever I had to rebuild. Uh, it was really, really sloppy. Uh, and just what little bit I've used it, it's starting to get sloppy in this joint too. All the steering column put back together. That pump was replaced. Uh, it was a nightmare. <laughs> it was a lot of work, but it, it wasn't too bad. Just just time consuming. And then the brake system. Uh, got both of the master cylinders in there now. So they work great. Uh, took all of the emergency brake system apart. I had to take out the floor. I was able to adjust the brakes because that e-brake didn't even work at all. It, it was just so loose and sloppy, but just come to find out it was just all adjustment. Once I adjust it, that's working properly now too. So. It's great. It's exciting that that's all done and it all works and functions great. Uh, it has brakes again. <laughs> it has steering again. All right, let's get to putting this back together. I'll just quick walk walk around how this works. There's two hoses right here. Uh, the one that was bolted on there was the leaker. Right. So what I did is I tied a rope to the two hoses so that when I disconnected them, they would slide out with the shaft. So shaft-wise, there's a pin here slid that shaft out, the ram dropped down, disconnected the bucket, there's just two pins in the bucket, dropped it down, maneuvered this around so that all I had to do was drop that pin and this shaft came out. Once that inner shaft is out of the way, which runs the uh, extend hoe, then I was able to slide out the uh, inner ram. With the inner ram out of the way, then I could replace those two hoses. So what I did is I marked the two hoses. Um, the top one is left silver, the bottom one I painted black so that I could do the same thing on this end, you can see I've got silver and black. My black one bolts back on to the black hose. And then the one I left silver bolts on to this orange bracket. So that'll make it easier to know which one is which. If you get them backwards, the hoe is going to run backwards. It's not a catastrophic failure or anything, but it's just not going to work the way it's intended to work. So I will attempt now to slide all this back together and use that rope to pull the hoses up into place. All 
I'm surprised as heavy as that that ram is that it's really not that bad to just kind of maneuver it and slide it back up into place. It's still got quite a ways to go, but it's getting there. Okay, I've I've reached the end <laughs> and now I've gone too far so I've got to come back out so I can drop those hoses down. There's a hole in the side so you got to maneuver it up and through. One of those things I probably need a second hand. Another body. Somebody to pull that down while I push it up. Success! Definitely want to leave the covers on these. If you don't have covers for them Put a rubber glove or something over the end of it. It did pull a lot of gunk up that shaft. So now I just need to get that ram up to this position where I can get a guide pin in there, hold it in place, and shove this pin back through. I'm losing a lot of fluid from that, that ram. So I'm going to go ahead and bolt these hoses into place where they belong and that'll stop that fluid from moving and stop that ram from moving. I'm probably going to have to extend that ram back because it's starting to come in. So I may have to crack these open and open that ram back up. I was able to slide that ram up into this area and it looks like I'm pretty close. Ha, look at that, right on target. Now I just need to get this through there. I had to kind of maneuver the tail end around a little bit to get this to line up on the other side, but When I slid this extend a hoe shaft out, I just dropped it onto these logs. I can't pick it up, it's just a little too heavy for me. So I'm going to try to wedge it up into place, and then what I'll do is I'll hook up a cable come along, and hopefully I can guide it as I pull it up inside. This is the point that this is as far as I can get it by prying it up in. So now I need to get my cable come along, rig up a system to pull it the rest of the way. I'm gonna go get me another pry bar. We're going to have to get around this thing to get it inside the shaft. Pry bar down there, a little prying up here. She's going in. All right, I'm going to coat this shaft with grease before I get this all the way up in there. It appears that I'm on a bind. The shaft is going in a pretty drastic angle and I think it's, it's hitting something inside. So I'm going to have to fire this beast up and lift this up. I've got all the lines semi-tight so I shouldn't spray fluid all over the place. So hopefully it goes okay. And I've got the cable come along holding this in because if I raise it up too much, it's going to take off and fall out. Fire it up. Definitely got some maneuvering to do. This has got to go up, that's got to go down, it's got to come together. We'll get it there. So the hydraulic cylinder needs to line up with this hole. And it's tight in there. So as I'm pulling it back, 
that shaft is going back with it. It might be a little tricky to figure this one out. It's definitely right there, <laughs> but it's hitting on, on the area that I need to line up with. I've got to move it over. Don't know how I'm going to do that. So I moved the chain from here and wrapped it around this outer piece. Now everything just kind of fell into place. Now it's just a matter of lining these up so I can drive the pin through there. The inner shaft is too far in, so this has got to go out, this has got to go back, and they've all got to line up. And there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven layers of parts, all moving parts that need to be lined up. Success! Got the pin in. Got it clipped on. But I did have to have help. My daughter helped. Thank you. <laughs> All right, now I gotta get it over there and get the bucket on it. Well, that was a huge success. I've got to say, I was really dreading having to replace these two hoses, and especially after I got online and saw how much work was involved and the, the feasibility of getting another backhoe here or rigging up something to be able to pick this up, not necessary. I could probably do this all by myself. Luckily, my daughter came up and helped me with the last little bit. Uh, it did make the job a little bit faster. But you really could do this alone with just hand tools. So I'm really excited because this ended up costing me $60 a piece for the two lines, $60 for the front line, $65. It was a little bit more, a little bit longer hose, a little bigger fittings. Oh, that reminds me. Still got to do the fuel line. I'll show you that too. That fuel line is a $25 part. Uh, there's such thing as people out there that like to gouge you when you're in need. I couldn't find that part anywhere. There was only one company anywhere in the country that I could find it. Yet four of them. Like I say, um, it lists for $25 to $30. You wanted $150 bucks for it. What do you do? You gotta pay it. I gotta have the hose. I can't make it. It's a heavy, heavy, thick stainless steel tube with special fittings on it that is specific to this year and make and model. So yeah, gouged big time on that one. So, 250 including the hydraulic fluid, another 150 for the fuel line, not bad. I would have paid more than $500 to get somebody up here to help me. So, pretty excited about that. Everything's working again. I can get back to work. So, here's just a quick rundown, a little, little bit about the engine. Now that I can start it, and I can lift the front bucket up out of the way so I can get the side shields off, I'll show you that line, and then we'll call it good.
<laughs> when you leave your equipment out in the wilderness, <laughs> you just gotta lock everything up. I really never had any problems, but others have. <clears throat> Sorry, the lighting isn't exactly the best, these shadows, but this line right here is the one that snapped. I went ahead and put it in. It was a pretty easy switch. But this is the line. I don't know if you can see that, but it's very thick walled. It's probably a quarter inch diameter with only a, about a sixteenth of an inch, maybe even a little bit less hole that the pressurized diesel fuel is being pushed through and that just snapped off. Uh, I can tell by the staining that it's been cracked for a while and I noticed there was a little bit of leakage over here and I assumed that it was just the way the fittings were on there and they needed to be tightened up. So I tightened it just a hair and went back to work. Well, that was uh, about an hour before it snapped. So I believe it was cracked. And when I tightened this fitting down, I think I put stress on it. I think it twisted it. There's a fitting on the end of this, on both ends, that there's friction when it's tightened. And I think when that was tightened down, this tightens up against to seal it, this end was getting pressure as it twisted so when i put the new one on i greased this so this will stay tight against the fitting and the, and the pump and the injector and this will slide so i've got that taken care of now i've got all my lines in everything's working I went through a quick test now i'm actually going to move some dirt around but that'll be it for this video i can get rid of those Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you like what I'm doing. Please leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.